that you're the light of the world. And they that follow you shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We do not want to forget that thou art the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. We do not want to forget that you're the Lord of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. We want to know you. The power of your resurrection, the fellowship of your suffering, and be made conformable to thy death. We want to be like Jesus. Help our hearts on today that we might see you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to key in on three words. One question in verse number 38. Jesus turned and saw them following, saith unto them, What see ye? What are you looking for? What are you seeking after? What are you seeking to die? In a day when we find people wandering and wondering in their minds, seeking something to satisfy, they got this one stop shop mentality. If I can only get this, I'll be satisfied. If I can only buy this, I'll be satisfied. If I can only move this far up on the ladder, I'll be satisfied. They want to go someplace like some stores, like Walmart became when they came out, like a one-stop shop. If you need it, we got it. Or we have it, excuse me. I keep forgetting I live in a dignified world now. Back when I lived in the redneck world of Tennessee, it was, we got it, now it's we have it. Now that I live in Indiana. But that's how people are. Even in churches, they become seeker friendly, feel good social clubs. What do you want from church? What do you want? I've had people ask me, what does your church have to offer? I give them the three P's. I say we offer prayer. We offer prayer. And we offer preaching. And let me say, we also offer fellowship with the people of God. But we offer, what do you have to offer? I mean, instead of answering their question, I could just say, what seek you? What are you looking for? You want it? We'll make it happen. But that's not going to happen. What are they looking for? Now, when I do ask them, what seek you? What are you looking for? And from their answer, I can, I can turn, I can uh, take their answer and try to turn their attention onto what they need instead of what they want. They will say, we want a program for our children. We want a program for our music. We want a program to reach out to help the poor and needy. They've got lots of things they want, but they don't want to do anything. They want something, but don't want to do anything. That's how it that time. Matter of fact, we used to tell them in Texas, oh, you stick around a little while, and we'll have we'll, we'll get that program going. You want to you want to join up and help us do it? Okay. We'll make it happen. You want to run a bus route? All right. You're qualified, capable. We'll get a bus route started. We'll start out with, you start picking up kids in your car. Then we might get a van. One guy said, why does not the church buy a van? I said, why'd you buy a new truck? Why don't you give to a van? You really think we ought to have a van? Why don't you give to it? Put your money where your mouth is. People always want something but don't want to do anything. Now, that, I, I, that was just a different, that was even a different message, but the idea is what are you seeking? What seek ye? Let's get our eyes on what 
they need instead of what they want. We want to get their eyes on Christ. I'd like somebody to come in and say, I say, what are you looking for? What are you seeking for in church? All I'm looking for is you to get my eyes on him with whom I have to do. That I might walk closer with God. That I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Wouldn't that be nice for somebody to tell you that? I don't want, I don't want a hand out. I don't want a hand up. I want to help out. Get people to get their eyes on Jesus. Isn't that? Wouldn't that be a blessing? They do. They ask you, what do they have? What do you have for our children? You know what I tell them? I said, I have Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's who your children need. Oh, my. We have praising. We have preaching. We have prayer. Speaking of prayer, 9.15 Sunday mornings in my office. Prayer time. All right. And, uh, so they ask, what we get if we come to your church? And I tell them nowadays, I say, it all depends. If you want to respond to God, you can receive peace in your heart. You can receive a peace. Because God grants you peace. You can receive the king of peace. You can receive more peace. For Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. Not as the word giveth unto you. I give unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. If a person responds to the preaching of the word of God, and, 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 and they, they rightly receive the message of grace of God, that's on the message that's only found in Christ Jesus the Lord, they will end up refreshed, and the result will be a peace that passes understanding. What seek ye when you come to church? Are you prepared to receive what you want? Or do you come carrying your burdens from the day and from the night, never casting your cares on the Lord, saying, I want to go in there and it's going to take a half hour, an hour for the preacher to get through all my garden so he can get to my home. The word of God pierces the divide and sunder. But can I say, if you harden your heart, you've got a heart of stone, it takes a little bit more work to do some piercing. Have you ever tried to put some sticks on there, drill something, and, and you find out you hit a hard spot? And you hit that hard spot, and it takes a little bit more work. You say, I might have to go get another bit. Oh, I might have to, oh, I might have to go get a diamond face bit. Hallelujah. I mean, I might have to do this. I might have to do that. But I'm going to get through that. If you come already hard and never got your heart soft with the Lord, why, why do you think it takes so long to get to the piercing through the darkness and the, through the hardness of our heart? We have hardened our hearts through the deceitfulness of sin, what we watch, what we listen to. Where we go. I, I ain't even preaching. I, I know this is a message probably for somebody else other than you. I understand that. But you me say I'm a man of like passions like you are and like they are. I find it in my own self that so many times I'll get in the Word of God and it takes me a 45 minutes just to get God to speak. Because my heart has already been calloused from other things. I've allowed anger or bitterness or something to get my heart work to a hardness. And it takes so much work to get it done. What's the world seek? Let me tell you that just for a moment. Just for a moment. What do you think the world seeks after? Well, I'm glad you want to know what the world seeks after. Because the Bible tells us what the world seeks after. In chapter 6 of the book of Matthew, in verse number 19, he says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust is corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. What do they seek after? To lay up treasures. 
But he says, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust nor corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. Yeah. For where your treasure is, there shall your heart be also. The world seeks after treasures on earth. Things of the world. Things of the earth. He goes on and says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? And then he goes on to say, No man can serve two masters. For he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You can not serve God and man. Therefore I say to you, now watch this, take a little bit of thought for your life. No, he says take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what she shall put on. Is not the life more than me and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much more are you not much better than they? Which of you taking thought can add one cubit to his statue? Now let me say, we might take a lot of cubits off our waistline. By taking some thought. And we might have, but we cannot add one cubit to our stature by taking thought. And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little fighter? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Now watch this. For after all these things, does the world see? Do the world or do the Gentiles see? Who's the Gentiles? That's the people of the world. You want to know what the world seeks after? Things that are not that God promises to supply. Seek ye first. The Father knows you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things should be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now let me say, that's a difficult state. God never challenges us to think of the nasty now and now, to worry about the future on earth. He keeps on trying to get us to set our affection on things above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. He keeps on trying to get us to get our minds stayed upon Him, looking for the Im imminent, immediate rapture, or calling away, catching to get catching up of the church, the saints of God. Why? Because the natural tendency in the world is to worry about what's going to happen. Worry about who gets in office in September. Worry about if the price of gas is going to go up next week. If the price of gas goes up and God wants you to go somewhere, he'll give you the money. If you don't need to lose weight and God wants you to have food, Guess what? God will supply your food. You won't go around naked. God has promised these things. 
He had to know that you have need of all these things. But here's what you and I do. We fret. How am I going to take care of this? How am I going to do that? Seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Do what you know to do. Do right. If the stars fall from the sky, just do right. The question, though, that these ones had. The question that these ones had. Is what it was, or what that Jesus had for these ones is, what seek ye? What seek ye? What are you looking for? You follow me, so what seek ye? Jesus had two men who were following him. And he asked his question. And it's a probing question. And so let us consider this question and apply it to ourselves. I want to attempt to look at three things. I want to look at the audience to whom the question was posed. We're going to look, take an analyzation of what the question that's asked. And we're going to look at the answer and ask ourselves, would, would our answer be the same as theirs? And if not, why not? The audience, the analyzation, and the answer. And then in closing, we'll take a quick look at how receiving what these ones sought after can change our life. Let's see the audience. John 1, 37, or 36, no, 37 and 38. And two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them follow him, and said unto them, What see ye? Let me give you two thoughts about these men. Number one, they were faithful men. Number two, they were following men. Faithful men and following men. They were faithful men. They were disciples of John the Baptist. They were listeners. You'll see that. They heard him speak. They were learners. And they long to go further with God. They were listeners, they were learners, and they were longers. What they were not was lazy. They wanted more to know more about God. They wanted to walk closer to God. They'd given up many of their things in life to go and listen to John the Baptist, to go and learn from John the Baptist. And they, because they longed for what John was talking about. They were faithful men. They wanted more than what the religious of the religious crowd of the time offered. And when John came along, and said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They said, I want to know more about that. And they hung out with him. And they went where he was. And when he was down there baptized, uh, just by Jordan, because there was much water there. Let me say, it takes water to baptize. Amen. And much water. You don't do it by sprinkling. Amen. I just wanted to get that in there. That's why they were baptized by Jordan. There was much water there. They, they heard some things. They wanted what John was talking about. They heard John testify of the coming Christ in verses 19 through 27. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent him to uh, priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they kept asking him. And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. 
as said the prophet Isaiah. And they asked him and said, Why baptize thou then if thou be not the Christ, nor lies worthy of that prophet? John answered, saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you whom you know not, he it is, who coming after me is preferred for before me, whose shoes last time not were to unloose. I mean, when he saw Jesus coming, he did not just testify of the coming Christ, but he pointed out the Christ. He says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He did not just preach Christ, but he pointed out Christ. He pointed people to Christ. Look unto him. And be ye saved all the ends of the earth. Look and live. He preached the coming Christ. And he preached when Christ came. Or pointed out when Christ came. Look at it. Let me say this. And then he put him under. He put under the cry. He put him all the way under. He baptized him. And he bare record that this is the Son of God. They'd heard all this. They'd listened to him say this. They learned what he was talking about. As the great prophet spake and stirred something deep inside these ones. And these faithful seekers said, I want to find out more about him. And these faithful men became following men. And they went and followed Christ. They followed him. Let me say two things about them following him. Number one, they followed him close enough that they could see him and observe him. They watched how he walked. They watched where he walked. They watched him. But they were not just close enough to observe his actions. But they were close enough to gain his attention. They were not sneaking and secretly spying. As some do. As those who came in to see that Titus was uncircumcised. They said, we're going to walk close enough where we can see him, but not only we see him, but that he can see us. We want his attention. We want to see his actions. We want to see what he does. If a serpent comes along and tries to snap at it. Boy, because the way John's talking about it. Man, this guy's got to be some super guy. Maybe he's just going to tell a serpent, go away. Oh, let me tell you, he did fight a serpent. Oh, hallelujah. And he fought him with the word of God. But I'm not preaching on that. They were close enough to see everything he did. And can I say, as they saw what he did, they could find no fall in him. If you were to follow me, if you were to ride the car with me, you would find I have flaws. I try to be faithful. I try to follow Christ. I try to live all out for God. I want to do that. But I have flaws. But in the, in the flesh, Jesus Christ had no flaws. There was no fault in him. Let me say, many people today, if they can find not a flaw in what you're doing, they'll fabricate a flaw. The problem with me is, they don't have to fabricate near as much as they can find. I'm not as good as you. I've got problems. I've got issues. But he did. Right. They could see every action of his life as he was walking along that street. They could see his actions. 
and they could gain his attention. They were searching for something to satisfy them. Let me ask you this. You're here today in church. Why are you following Christ? What seek you? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Secondly, we're going to analyze the question. The question is three words, but it's so much more. He is not just asking what seek ye, but because of whom he's asking it to and what they're doing, he's asking them, what seek ye of me? Why are you following me? What seek ye is like, if you're just talking in general, what do you want to be when you grow up? Now let me say, there's a lot of things I want to be when I grow up. My biggest problem is I don't want to grow up. Sometimes I have to act like a grown up. But certainly, I have to grow older or go home to my long home. But I don't have to grow up to. I can still enjoy, enjoy life. And the way I've seen some grown ups, they certainly don't like life. I like it. I enjoy it. But I, I'm not talking about that. They were not, he was not asking them in a general what seek ye, but what seek ye from following me? Why are you following him? Why do you keep staying in the book of God? Why do you keep bowing your knees before God? Why do you keep listening to preaching about God? Why are you following him? His question was a, it was a probe for revelation. He wanted to know something. Are you just casually following me? Are you committed to following me? I'd ask you this. Are you just casually following Christ? Are you just casually following? Or are you committed to follow me? Would you stay following him if everything fell apart? If life fell apart, would you go your own way? Or would you stay in Christ? I've watched men that when everything was going decent and they thought that things were all right at the church and things were all right in their life, they'd stay. But the preacher preached something they didn't like, say something they don't like, something happened at the church they don't like, they, they decide they're going to they're going to change the carpet at the church. They don't like that. They say, I'm not staying. I'm a leader. There's people like that. And then there's those that are committed. And say, Lord, what would you have me to do? I'm staying until you say go. I'm going where you say me. Where you say go. I'm staying or I'm going. And it's all based upon you. Because I'm staying with you. When the fire Move, was moved, they moved. When the cloud moved, they moved. They stayed with God. These ones were following, they were watching him. They, he said, are you casual? Are you looking for, can you get some, can you get some food from me? There's a crowd out there that says, I'll stay as long as he feeds me. Are you looking to get me to pay your bills for you? I'll stay as long as he's putting oil in my pot and shows me how to pour that oil out so I can get some money. Are you staying with Christ because of what he does for you? Are you casual? 
or are you committed? Why are you following them? Do you really want something seriously? He was probing for revelation. And he was probing for confirmation. That they weren't just wanting something so they could go around and tell everybody, let me tell you about I got a chance to walk with Jesus. Let me tell you that I did this. Let me tell everybody where I was at, who I saw. Oh, I met the great missionary. Oh, I, I got the preacher's signature in my King James Bible. I don't know if I got Lee Robertson's in this one. I, I do know I got in this one here. I think I've got uh, Ron Garris's in this one. I've got Bob Van Dyke's in this one. I mean, I've got some signatures from some great men. Roy John, you said, I don't even know who he is. Great missionary. I'm talking about, I've got some people's signatures in my Bible. I've got to hang out with them. i got to eat ice cream with some men of God. Oh, yes, hallelujah. Drink coffee with some. Eat ice cream. Sit at their tables and just visit with them. But that's not why. Why are you hanging out with Jesus so you need ice cream with them and tell everybody, I got to eat ice cream with Jesus one day? Oh my. I got to enjoy the adventures of the traveler walking down the road with Jesus. Let me say, if there are no steps, there are no, no stories. But if all you're doing is steps so you can get stories, my friend, you're messing up. You go with the steps because it's the right thing to do. Because you want something. Let me just stop just and ponder. What do we really seek from Christ? What do we really seek when we seek His Word and His Word? When we're in our prayer closet? When we go to church? When we do ministry? Whatever it might be, why are you doing it? What seek you? There's to whom the question is posed, the audience. The analyzation of the question that is posed. But let's answer the question that is posed. What does this answer, their answer, possess? The answer that these disciples give possesses a prevailing theme to what the Christian life is supposed to be. Look at verse number 38. Verse number 38. The last part, they said unto him, Rabbi, where dwellest thou? That is a Christian life. Rabbi, where dwellest thou? What do you see? I want to know where you're at, where you're going. What you They sought some leadership. You'll notice the name there is Rabbi, which to say, being interpreted, is Master. They said, listen, we have left John, not because we didn't like John, but John told us to get our eyes on the Lamb of God who's taken the way to sin in the world. John said that he that cometh after me is preferred before me where he was before me. John said that he baptized with water, but you baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You baptized with more than what we had before. I'm going to follow you, and you now have become, we want you to be our master. They said, we're following you because we want you to be our master. That's what it says. Rabbi was being interpreted as master. What seek you? We're seeking leadership. We are wanting you to be our master. What seek you? Where dwellest thou? They wanted fellowship. We want to dwell where 
where you dwell. Go where you go. Live where you live. Is that not what Sister Ruth said to Naomi? My, thy people should be my people. Where thou goest, thou go. Where thou dwellest, thou dwell. Where you die, I'll die. Your people are going to be my people. Is that not what Sister Ruth said? Is that not what they're trying to say? Listen, we want to go where you go. Live where you live. We want to learn what you have to teach. Where well is that? We want leadership. And we want fellowship. We don't want you to buy us a new ship. We're not looking for anything from you except for you to lead us and guide us and love us. Lead us and love us. Give us fellowship and leadership. If we have those two things, it will survive. Now you tell me. He said what seek ye? And their answer was. Is that not what that says? They said unto him. Rabbi. Where dwell is that? That's the end of their whole state. And that sufficed him for the answer he wanted. Because from there. He said. Come and say it. I'll show it to you. The son of man has no place to take his head. The fox at home. I mean, I mean, fox and fence. I mean, that, but I, I'll, I'll show you where I'm at. You just come on and see. Spend time with me. I will let you hang out with me. It's late in the day. You can spend the evening. We'll fellowship together. We'll enjoy this fellowship together. I will teach you what I can teach you. I will lead you where I can guide you. I'll be what you want me to be is what he says. Come and see. Most people, they say, if he said, what, what seek ye? They say, I'm seeking trouble to put my family back together. And you know what happens? They'll come. They'll get their family starting straight now. And they don't go. They say, I want something because my finances are falling apart. They'll come. They'll ask some questions. You'll teach them some financial principles. And they'll go. I want somebody to help me and my girlfriend to, to get married. They'll come. You'll, say, you'll, you'll talk to them about things. You'll either tell them why they can't get married or tell them or why they shouldn't get married, why you won't do the wedding or, or, or you'll do the wedding. And guess what? If that's what they came for, they'll leave when they got what they wanted. These two came with one thing in mind. I need leadership. And I need fellowship. That's two things. I know it's all the same thing. I need your leadership and I need your love. Where do you abide? Everything else is a moot point. I want to know you. I want to be your student. I want to spend time with you. Take, teach. I don't want to know just what you've done. I want to know you. What see you? I'm asking you today. What do you see? We consider that Shunammite woman who said, I don't want to just come and stop by for supper. I want to stay, stop by and stay the night. And she made a place. Took up some space and made took, clean up some space and made a place for them. These men are asking the Lord to allow them to have a place in His space. Will you let us hang out with you? And the result of their answer 
was they got to dwell with him. Verse number 39. They delighted in him and they drew men to him. Look at verse 40. And one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he first found his own brother Simon say to him, We have found him a size, which is being interpreted as Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. He delighted in Christ and drew men to Christ. Verse number 45, it says, And Philip findeth Nathaniel and say to him, We have found him in the most of the law and the prophets did write Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathaniel say to him, Can there any good thing uh, come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. They delighted in Christ and they drew men to Christ. My friend, if we get our right attitude of what we see, and we just seek his leadership and his fellowship, we might end up loving him, delighting him, and drawing others to him. It's right there. I didn't make it up. It's in the book. It's a principle that we must learn. We must live. If we're going to be his disciples and abide in him. I'm not talking about saved, going to heaven. I'm talking about a disciple that's his. And if all you wanted was to go to heaven and you didn't want him, then you don't know him. Heaven's just an, act, an action. Paul did not say that I may know heaven, but that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Walk in the Spirit. They walked with Christ. They wanted Him. What seek ye? What seek ye? Father, I pray that you'd help us to seek ye while you may be found. Call upon the Lord while he is near. My Jesus, I love you.